Hi YouTube, this is a video showing how I installed my fish finder on my 2017 Yamaha FX SDHO. This is going to be a summary here. Later on in the video I'll show all the bits and pieces of the installation along the way. Over here, what I used was a, a ram ball mount. This is the inch and a half ball. Uh, this base here is rectangular. It's three inches long. It's two inches wide. And I used four stainless steel button head cap screws to hold that on. I also put a piece of felt between the, the um, ram base and the jet ski. I used a drum sander to shape that felt so that it would match the curve of the jet ski. Here I have the cables that are used for the fish finder. I'm using a Lowrance 5 inch chirp. I took and also wrapped the cables with black spiral wrap just to make them look neater. And then up here at the dash, if you can see it, I used one of the Hobie fittings to trim that wire coming through the, through the dash. These are some of the parts that I use for installing the fish finder. This is my Lowrance 5 inch fish finder unit. It's the Elite, Elite 5 Chirp. I have the cover for it. This is the bracket that I made to hold it on. This is special made and designed by me. Um, this is the piece that is on the left side of the jet ski and uh, this fits under the boring step. I have four pairs of adjusting holes for the transducer so you can adjust the elevation up and down. Uh, this is the spacer that fits on the um, on the other underneath the other side of the boarding step bracket, and the spacer just makes sure uh, it's there to make sure that the boarding step is not bolted onto the jet ski unevenly. Um, I also use some uh, because this bracket is a half inch thick. I used uh, some stainless steel bolts that are about three eighths of an inch, a half inch longer, just to make sure that I have plenty of thread inside the inner flange nut. And as you can see, there's quite a bit sticking out there. I would estimate there's about an inch and a quarter sticking out there. Um, I know a lot of people may not be interested in having this extra piece, piece of plastic up here at the top, so I did make a bracket um, that doesn't have any extra plastic. Um, so these would be the pieces that would be used for that, um, for that setup. And this is just a standard length bracket. Uh, the, this fits under the boarding step right here. And then this is the area where the uh, skimmer transducer will be mounted. And then, of course, you'd need the spacer on the other side as well. Um, this is the ram mount that I use. This is a medium length coupler arm. It uses the inch and a half ball. And Lowrance um, has an adapter. Actually, ram makes an adapter for the Lowrance Elite Series fish finders that fits right into the back side. And once this is in the fish finder you don't ever have to take it out so just for this video I took it out so you can see what it looks like and pull this little tab up here and slip it in pull that down and that's that's what it looks like I always leave that on there I never take it off we'll go ahead and put this on the jet ski so you can see what it looks like this just slips on there and we'll head over to the jet ski and put this on okay so just take the coupler arm put it on there I'm going to put the cables on the back of the fish finder. This one fits in here. This one fits in here. On the back side here, these are the parts that I use to hold the skimmer transducer onto the jet ski. Um, this is the skimmer transducer out of the box. This is the uh, mounting hardware out of the box. And this is the bracket that I made. Um, it's got four pairs of adjusting holes so you can move the transducer up and down. Um, I'm going to move this boarding step out of the way, stick a couple of screwdrivers into these holes so that holds the, the ladder down. You don't have to worry about using any straps to hold that down. Um, I actually have these for sale on eBay right now. Um, this particular bracket, it has extra length above the boarding step here so that you can put a couple zip ties to hold that cable in place. And then over here, you can see. You can see I use my split through haul cable fitting uh, to go through the hull there. I'm going to put a little bit of light on it so you can see it better. It's kind of hard to see because it's just a dark area, but um, that's what it looks like. And also, up under here, I took a zip tie, uh, a square zip tie clip, and I used the 3M 4200 to hold that clip uh, to the underside. and. Uh, I let it set up for a couple days and I ran a zip, zip tie through that clip to hold the cable 
up nice and tight to the bottom side of the jet ski. This is going to be a quick video showing how the fish finder is installed on my jet ski. This is a Yamaha FX SBHO. I have a Lowrance 5 HDI. I mounted it with a inch and a half ball mount on the left side. The reason I put it on the left side is because my gas filling cap is on the right hand side underneath the hood. So I put it on the left just to keep it out of the way when, I have the, when I'm at the gas dock filling up. Um, I kind of like it on the left hand side because I am right handed so I use my right hand for the throttle and um, having it on the left frees up my left hand so that when I am driving slow at a safe speed I can reach over with my left hand and I can make adjustments on the screen. Um, the other thing uh, I'd like to point out here is uh, having it on the left side with this ball mount frees up the bottle holder over here on the right hand side from the factory and oh my gosh this thing is so handy I use this thing all the time I can put my VHF radio in there I could put my handheld GPS in there I can put my cell phone in there I can put my earplugs in there um, why people put their fish finder here and basically block that space from being used doesn't make sense when you have a company like Ram that makes ball mounts specifically made to mount products to uh, marine products boats jet skis airplanes you name it. I mean, this stuff just works so well. There's really no sense in trying to uh, reinvent some kind of bracket that fits in here when Ram already makes the stuff that you can bolt onto the side. Um, having it on the side over here does block the use of that mirror on the left, um, but I still have the, the right-sided mirror that's completely functional. Um, really, these Yamaha mirrors aren't that great anyway, so if I'm riding with somebody, um, what I have them do is I write, they write on the right hand side of me so I can see them in the mirror. And uh, if I really need to use that left mirror, I can kind of position myself uh, to kind of look around the, the fish finder too. Um, another thing that I like about having it on the left hand side here is this is almost like a heads up display uh, setup. Uh, what I mean by that, there are a lot of people who mount their fish finder to this panel and um, man, it just doesn't seem like a, the best way to do it because when you have the fish finder here on this panel, in order to use it, you have to take your eyes off of what's in front of you in order to look at the screen, much like what you're seeing right now. I'm, I'm looking at this panel with a GoPro camera and I can't see what's in front of me. But now look, I'm, I'm looking over here at the fish finder and you can still see what's in front of me. So this is a much safer way of uh, having the fish finder. Um, I would also like to show you how I ran the wires through the dash. You can see the Hobie fitting right there for these wires and I'll kind of try to take this around the back. That's what the back looks like. I'll take it around the side too so you can see what the side looks like. I'm on the water. I can't step off the jet ski. So anyway, I'm going to start the jet ski up. I'm going to run it. I think I can get up to about 45 miles an hour before I start losing bottom. And I'm also going to run it so you can see uh, what the screen looks like with the ride system. So right now the jet ski is completely off. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And I can, I, I'm going to show you what to expect with the ride system. The bucket down in neutral. Um, the bucket down in reverse. And then also in forward. Basically to summarize it, uh, whenever the bucket's down, the, uh, the reverse bucket is down. It puts bubbles in the water around the transducer. And that'll kind of wash out the... Um, the sonar picture and you're really not going to get a good reading but whenever the jet ski is in forward it doesn't uh, it doesn't put those bubbles in the water the right buck uh, the reverse bucket is up the bubbles aren't in the water and you get a clear sonar picture so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and show you what that looks like All right, so right now, this is neutral. I have my steering wheel to the left. So it is holding bottom. I'm spinning around to the left, but you can see there's a little distortion in the picture. I'm gonna turn the wheel to the right so you can see what it looks like. And I have my transducer mounted on the port side. So you can see the picture is clear when it's to the right. Now I'm spinning to the right. I have the handlebar turned to the right. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold it centered. So 
so I'm just kind of standing still in the water right now. That's what it looks like. I'm going to put it in reverse so you can see the picture in reverse. There's reverse. I'm going to turn the wheel to the left. And you can see it kind of washes out the picture. I'm going to turn the wheel to the right and reverse. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put it in forward. That's what it looks like in forward. So I'm in some shallow water right here. It's, there's a lot of weeds in the bottom of this lake. So a very clear picture going forward. I have my jet ski running and I'm going to go as fast as I can and hold the camera on the fish finder so you can see how fast I'm able to hold bottom with the sonar with my transducer bracket. Left hand corner of the screen, SOG is speed over ground. Right here is temperature, depth of water, and of course, this is what you want to pay attention to. This shows you how deep the water is. I'm going to go ahead and head back to the dock and keep in mind I've already adjusted my transducer usually after you put the transducer on it needs to be adjusted up and down so that it's uh, it's riding just the way it should in the water um, I'm very happy with my bracket it works really well with the ride system there's really no way of avoiding the bubbles that are put in the water unless you do like a, a through haul on the bottom or if you do something on the inside where you try and silicone something on the inside um, man good luck finding a spot though Alright, I'm going to head back to the dock and uh, get this video on YouTube so you guys can see it. Thanks.